Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be doing a problem from the Balkan Mass Olympiad 2005, problem number three. This is a great inequality because it's not standard. I invite you to try this out for a minimum of 20 minutes, ideally 45 to an hour, not more than an hour and 45 minutes. If you'd like to go along, but let's give this a go for the next five minutes. So now let's begin. The first part is like, whoa, this is non-standard. It's like, okay, symmetry, symmetry, symmetry. And then like, whoa, what's this? What's this? Why is this happening to me? Why did I get this inequality? Oh no. So the first thing I want to do is to show like, we can prove this inequality quickly without the four a minus b squared over a plus b plus c. Because if we can do a lot of things, like one is we can do Cauchy, Schwartz, we can just like say this times a, times b plus c plus a is going to be greater than a plus b plus c squared. And then when you get rid of, divide by a plus b plus c, you get this greater than or equal to this. Alternatively, you can add b, c, and a on this side and on this side, and then just do a, m, g, m, right? a squared over b is greater than or equal to two, two a, and so on and so forth. You add them up and you're done. But this thing, you have something extra. How are you going to deal with that? So I'm going to ask you, you have these sort of two proofs that I've outlined more so than I've written down. Actually, I have not written them down. And now my question for you is how would you do, how do you have do, deal with inequality once this is added? And here's where I invite you to pause for five, 10 minutes. Think about how can you deal with that? And the answer is, well, wait a second. I have this say AMGM proof. The AMGM thing I have, I can rewrite that instead of just using the inequality, let me rewrite this as a square. Instead of like saying AMGM, let me write it as a square. Because what happens is I'll get A squared over B, then I'll have minus 2A plus B. I'll get plus B squared over C, minus 2b plus c and then I'll get plus c squared over a minus 2c plus a needs to be greater than or equal to 4a minus b squared over a plus b plus c okay now let's write these down as like these you know differences of squares what are they well I invite you here to pause for two minutes and figure that out and they are so we need to have this is going to be a square. So we're going to have a over the square root of b minus the square root of b squared. That's what this part is. Plus b over the square root of c minus the square root of c squared plus c over the square root of a minus the square root of a squared. Now, on the other hand, these two, these things, like squares of V, why don't I just like write this down as A minus B over the square root of B squared. And similarly for these two. And instead of this, let me write this down as A minus B squared over B plus B minus C squared over C plus c minus a squared over a it needs to be greater than or equal to for a minus b squared over a plus b plus c. Now, how are we going to deal with this? This is a, mind you, a nicer thing to look at as an inequality than the thing we had at the beginning. These are now variables of a sort like these a minus b, b minus c, c minus b, and c minus a squared are variables of some sort we don't know their ordering it is not symmetric so we can't assume any ordering but we have something here that we can look at them as variables and now we can apply inequalities on this and here's where i invite you to pause for the next 15 minutes and try to push this problem further and here's the next step wait a second these are squares these are all real num positive real numbers this is a plus b plus c. Well, this is true if and only if 
a minus b squared over b plus b minus c squared over c plus c minus a squared over a times the a plus b plus c or in other words times b plus c plus a is greater than or equal to this is like the question mark for a minus b squared however what does this remind you of pause for three minutes now and here's the next step let me clear this up Boom. so this reminds me of Cauchy Schwartz. Like this is the form that Cauchy takes in. And what do we have? We have this a minus b squared over b times b. So we're gonna have this thing right here. Call this the left hand side L. L is greater than or equal to what? The like in reality, how we'd write this as the absolute value of a minus b, like you want these things to be positive plus the absolute value of b minus c plus the absolute value of c minus a and everything here is squared right it holds for the absolute value like just write this so that you have more generalizability because uh, with the absolute values it's stronger and you can sort of assume that you have the stronger inequality and now we're left to prove that this is greater than or equal to 4 times a minus b squared. <laughs> right? In other words, we're left to prove what once we cancel the square, squares and write this as the absolute value of a minus b and this as 2 times a minus b. We're going to have this as equivalent to a minus b plus b minus c plus c minus a greater than or equal to 2 times the absolute value of a minus b. In other words, if this plus this is greater than or equal to this, we're done. And now there's a bunch of ways to go about doing this. One thing to say is, first of all, let's write this as a minus c, just so it's symmetric in a and b. Then I can, without loss of generality, assume a is greater than or equal to b. Okay? And now, where is c? Is it greater than or equal to b between a and b greater than a? Let me say, like, if c is greater than or equal to a, then this is equivalent to 2c minus b minus a greater than or equal to a minus b, boom, boom, equivalent to 2c greater than or equal to 2a, which is true if c is less than or equal to a greater than or equal to b then this thing is equivalent to a minus c plus c minus b so that gets rid of the b is equivalent to a minus b greater than or equal to a minus b we're done and if c is less than or equal to b then this is equivalent to a plus b minus 2c greater than or equal to a minus b kaboom kaboom and this is equivalent to b greater than or equal to 2b greater than or equal to 2c which is true this is also known as i think the triangle inequality with absolute values generally speaking the absolute value of x plus the absolute value of y is greater than or equal to the absolute value of x plus y and it's done by the same sort of casework analysis here and you can look at it so if this was x and y I would just write this like this. And now we have absolute value of x plus absolute value of y. We're going to equal to the absolute value of x plus y. And that's how we're done. This finishes up the problem. Now we just like write this down backwards. We'd say we know that from here we have 4a minus b squared is less than or equal to the squares of this. And we know this is less than or equal to this thing right here. Then we take this, we divide by A, B, C, and we get the thing we need. That's how, like, this is why sometimes it can be more difficult to read solutions because you start from the end instead of from the beginning. And the idea here that I want to share with you is like when you have this term that's, oh, what's happening with it? How to deal with it, right? How can you deal with that term? And to look at, okay, if I have this, I have this thing that holds true in general. Now I need to look at what happened. Like, 
I know the proof of this is using AMGM or Quashi, but I know that these things factor out. Like that's how, like the AMGM is really a shorthand for, if you're taking two variables, it's very much a shorthand of factoring. And so you're saying, okay, let me factor this via the AMGM so that I can then use this as new variables. And I think that was the main idea behind this problem What I was really excited to show you here. Now, we need to show when does the inequality holds true, like when do we have equality actually? And we have equality when this is true. In other words, this is true. And when these things are all equal or they're of the same proportion. And I think, okay, let's begin with this thing. When is this true? This is true. This isn't true. In the, yeah. If c is greater than or equal to a, so if c is between a and b, this thing is an equality. Otherwise, so we have a needs to be between c and b, and or c must be equal to either b or a. Okay, so this is the necessary condition for equality here. Now, what about equality here? Oh my god, I forget when Cauchy has equality. It's like this over this is this over this. I think that's the case. For Cauchy, and because at the end, because that's what happens in Cauchy, we're factoring these things up like that. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking of a quicker way to look at this. It means like a minus b squared over b squared is equal to b minus c squared over c squared. There isn't that much, so we need to have this, assuming what our loss of generality is greater than or equal to b. We can't, can we assume what our loss of generality is greater than or equal to b here? We can't, so we need to have either this or this thing holds true in this case. And if we're in this universe, then we have, huh, we have, we have C's between A and B. Let's assume A is greater than or equal to B. In the case, A greater than or equal to B. We have this is equivalent to A minus B over B equal to B minus C over C. This cancels out because it becomes a one. We have A over B is B over C. And I think we'd get A is equal to B is equal to C. C minus A squared over A squared. Now this thing becomes A minus C over, when we get rid of the square roots, it becomes A minus C over A. So it does look, uh, it, it does look somewhat different than the other ones. And we can just subtract that this is equal to B minus C over C. Now this is equivalent to huh, AC minus C squared equal to BA minus AC. And using that AC is B squared. And we have B squared minus C squared. 2B squared minus C squared is BA. Oh, it's not, it's not easy. I invite you to actually pause for three minutes and figure out when does the equality hold true. And here's the answer when I, once I clean up the board. And what we have once we actually clear this up a bit, and it took me a while to figure out, like in this case, we actually get that this is that AC is equal to B squared. However, given A and C are both greater than or equal to B, this would imply that A is equal to B is equal to C. This was what I thought would need to hold true and I was very scared for a while. And now for this case, it's, it doesn't seem like it's going to be resolved quite quickly. C is the uh, geometric mean of AB here. And we need these two other things to also hold true. And so I'm thinking a way to deal with this because this is a case of equality. We're now trying to solve this equation. And this is a, homogeneous equation, meaning in variables a, b, and c, which means that if a, b, c was a solution here, then so would k, a, k, b, and k, c would be another solution here. So we can assume without loss of generality to make the math easier, 
we can assume that C is equal to 1. Because if ABC was a solution, then A over C, B over C, and 1 is also a solution. So now let's solve for C equals 1. We get this is equal to AB, and we get 2B is equal to B squared plus A. And we get that 2AB is equal to A squared plus B. Now, again, this isn't <laughs> really done yet, though, and I was thinking, how can we do this? Well, one is one way is to say A is equal to 1 over B, and then solve both of these equations, though. I'm a bit afraid of that because they seem to be, this will be of the degree 3. If I do that, so what I need to do is somehow maybe write this as 4AB, 4AB minus 2a squared is equal to 2b, which is equal to b squared plus a. And now I look at these two, and can I combine them in any way, shape, or form? It does not seem likely that I can. I get 2a squared plus, huh, plus b squared minus 4ab plus a is 0. I could look at this as a quadratic now in, say, either a or b maybe in b and that will give me what a needs to be though i have a times b is one at the same time and this is why this is a, it seems like the equality case is also interesting and interestingly difficult so what how are we going to solve this i invite you to pause for actually five minutes and try to solve it and here's the next step and the idea is that wait a second the initial fear was if we say a is this, like put a is 1 over b, we'll have a degree free equation. But wait a second, this is also the case when a is equal to b is equal to c. So one solution is 1 and 1, which we see is like 2 is 2 plus 1. Uh, 2 is 1 plus 1, 2 is 1 plus 1. So we can in fact make the switch and we'll get that 2b is b squared plus 1 over b. And then when we multiply everything through by b, move everything on this side, this is equivalent to b cubed minus 2b squared plus 1 is 0. Now, this is of degree 3, but we know one of the zeros. So, this is the cool part, like, because we know one of the zeros, we know that this is factorable as b minus 1 times something. And that something is, like, you can notice one way is to write this as b squared times b minus 1, and then I have minus b squared plus 1, which is minus b squared minus 1, so this is b squared minus b minus 1 is 0. So we can in fact factor this, and then we get that for one solution is a is 1, b is 1, but we're interested in the other ones. And what is this? Well, here the solutions are b is equal to a 1 plus and minus the square root of 5 over 2. Now, because a, b, and c are positive real numbers, that means the solution is b is 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2, and then a is equal to the square root of 5 minus 1 over 2, and then c is equal to 1. And now if we multiply everything by k, c is k, a is this times k, and we can also notice that it checks out right here because right, this thing becomes, when we plug in a is equal to b, this is 2, is equal to 1 over b squared plus b. So again, when we multiply everything by b squared, we'll get 2b squared is 1 plus b cubed, the same thing we had before. And by that, we just finished the problem. <laughs> just look at that. And I actually like this a lot now. And I saw this, I like it a lot. This finishes up the equality case. And with that, the problem is finished. It took me... Frankly, it took me a bit longer than I expected it would take me, but I'm happy how we've done this. And now the problem is done, and as always, thanks for problem solving.